everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week we are starting a whole new project. Don't worry, I will be returning to the spooky spiderweb project soon, but this week I am going to start a different Halloween project collaboration, and that is Gunny Saxoween. <laughs> So there are a whole bunch of other costumers and I think just other costumers on Instagram who are creating Halloween dresses that are inspired by the gunny sacks dresses of the 1970s and 80s. And this collaboration was started, I believe, by Gwen's Shenanigans. I'm going to go ahead and link her channel and her Instagram down below in the description. And also check out the hashtag gunny sacks a ween, which I will spell on screen here. And there will probably be a lot of other people both on YouTube and on Instagram sharing their projects as they go along. So I did mention this project briefly a few weeks ago in my pumpkin dress video when I was kind of talking about all of my fall projects, but I am still not 100% positive exactly how this dress is going to turn out. I have my ideas, I even sketched them out, and then I kind of changed my mind, and then I thought I had everything really solidified, and last night I was browsing through other gunny sex dresses on Instagram, and I found one that I fell in love with. So this was kind of my original inspiration idea, something like this, but with a shorter skirt and longer sleeves, and also with a corduroy bodice that could be taken off or put on over the top as a separate piece. Because a lot of the gunny sack dresses have little velvet or corduroy bodices that like, a lot of them lace up the front, I think some button up the front, but that they go over the top, kind of like a little bit of a vest. And I thought it'd be fun to create something that would have those two other pieces. But then last night I found this dress online and fell in love. Now this dress is almost too history bounding for what I want. Also, I really don't want a high tight collar for daily type wear. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I don't like things that are high and tight around my neck. So if it has that, I'm not gonna wear it often. And I want to be able to wear this often. This is gonna be a dress made out of Halloween quilting cotton. So this is going into my normal wardrobe for fall and spooky season, at least for the next month this year, and then for next year. So if I do this dress, the collar dicky part is going to be separate. It's going to be a dicky, and it's going to snap in. I'm not 100% positive that I'm going to do that yet, but I think I'm going to take the bodices, the two bodices, and just kind of blend them together into one, and I'm going to make this up as I go along. Now, the pattern that I think I'm going to be using as kind of my main base is going to be Butterick 6352. That is this one right here, one of the Gertie patterns. And I have used this pattern before or used pieces of this pattern before multiple times. The time that I really used the most of this pattern was when I made my dapper dirndl bound Rapunzel dress, which looks like this. And that was very much this bodice shape. So I think that this bodice shape is going to be a really good jumping off point for this. But again, I'm doing long sleeves for sure because it's fall. We're starting to get into those like 60s or even 50s temperatures Fahrenheit and I'm excited about that. The skirt I'm also not positive about. <laughs> really it's that I know that I want it to be gathered at the waist. I know that I want it to be very full. I know that I want it to have a ruffle at the bottom but I'm not sure this skirt I believe is honestly just a gathered rectangle. I don't want a gathered rectangle. I want something that spins nicely but if I do it as a circle that would take up so much fabric that like to get the gathers that I really want at the waist that I just don't have that to spare. So I think what I'm going to do is flared gores on this skirt that will give me the gathering at the waist that I want where it's going to be fairly densely gathered but also still flare out at the bottom. So I haven't yet decided how many gores but I'm probably just going to do a whole bunch of gores that are the same shape all around, sew those together and then gather them at the waist. Which, by the way, I guess you might want to see the fabric for this project, don't you? So this is going to be the main fabric for this project. I have showed this in that pumpkin video, but it is pumpkins and crows and cats and potion bottles and eyes and hands and spiders and all sorts of Halloween-y stuff. And it is a printed cotton with just a little bit of metallic on some of the elements like crows' faces cat's tail, etc. And I fell in love with this fabric as soon as I saw the little ad for it online and I knew I had to get it. 
I can't remember how many yards I got, but I think it's at least six. So hopefully that's enough for what I want to do. Otherwise I think it's still available. But the one thing that I found out about this fabric, because gunny socks dresses, one of the main identifying features about the majority of them is that they take multiple different fabric prints and mix them together. And generally they're somewhat similar prints, like maybe multiple black and gold prints and they mix them all together. And But they're different sizes and different scales. And there's usually at least two, sometimes three prints in one garment and they look super freaking cute. So I took this with me and I went to Joann's to find the match and found zero, literally nothing in all of Joann's that matched. So I went to a local quilt store and was like, okay, it's quilting cotton, this is gonna be great. And no, there was nothing in the quilt store that matched. So apparently there just aren't fabrics out there that match this. They're all like the wrong shade of black or the wrong shade of gold or both or, the wrong scale or they're too shiny, too bright, etc. So yeah, this is the only quilting cotton fabric that I'm going to use. It's possible that I might use some solid black in there, but I think the main solid black is going to be that corduroy bodice. So I've got super, super narrow whale corduroy. I know that when I get it up close, it looks like a totally different shade of black, but and it might be slightly off. This is slightly more brown, but I think that that's going to still be okay as the bodice. And yeah, it's the super narrow whale, so it almost looks kind of even velvety, but I think that's gonna be super, super cute together. And then there's gonna be trim. So I need contrast trim. I'm gonna aim for gold. I don't have it yet, so it might have to be black, but there's gonna be a lot of contrast trim involved in this. And again, I don't know yet whether that's gonna be like self-made like out of fabric trim or that's something that I can find at Joann's or what we're gonna be kind of winging this project a lot which is why it's gonna take at least two weeks so all of that said I think I'm gonna start cutting out skirt panels and get it to the fullness that I want and I'm also going to make a mock-up of the bodice here potentially changing some of the lines in front to better match those two inspiration bodices so I'm gonna go get to work so a bit of an update because I now have actual plans and decisions made on this dress. So first I went through and just kind of worked out the math of how much yardage I would need based on the type of skirt that I want. So for the skirt, my plan is to do five panels, which hopefully isn't too many, five panels that are all A-line panels that will be approximately about like 20 or so inches across at the top and the full width of the fabric at the bottom. The fabric is 40 inches wide, so it's quite narrow. So I'm going to have five of those panels and one of them is going to be centered over the front and then two are going to meet in the center back and then the rest of the seams will distribute themselves. But that center back seam will be the zipper continuous down from the back of the dress because it seems like most of these dresses zipped up the back. So that is what I'm going for and I just realized that I forgot to get the zipper. So I guess I will be going to Joann's at some point to get the zipper for this project. The other thing that I figured out with doing that math of wanting five skirt panels is that the skirt panels would be 25 inches long, each one including seam allowance, and then but at the bottom of that, attached around to the bottom of that, would be a ruffle that would be just straight on the grain and it would be nine and a quarter inches tall minus hem and seam allowances, but that includes the hem and seam allowance. And I think I need approximately 400 inches of it. Because if I did my math correctly, the skirt panels, the five panels at the bottom, will be about 200 inches around. And I think I want double width of gathers in from the ruffle into those skirt panels, which would mean 400 inches around. Which means that there are going to be 10 9 inch panels ripped across the grain. So just that takes up like getting close to three yards of fabric, which is crazy. I realize this. And then the skirt panels themselves wind up being, I forget, but I did the math on it. And basically with all of my math, adding in the long sleeves that because they're puffed, can't go side by side on the fabric because it would be too wide for the width of the fabric. So with all of that sort of stuff in there, I estimated that I would need eight and a half yards of fabric. And I measured my fabric that I bought 
and I have five and a half yards of it. So I actually just got back from Joanne's, which is why I'm kind of annoyed at myself for forgetting that zipper. And I went and got another eight yards of this fabric. My hope is that maybe I can cut the full thing out on the eight yards, not need that extra half that I calculated in there, and then we'll be able to return the previous five and a half that I had already purchased. Otherwise, I might sell it on Etsy or something like that. So I guess if I do decide to do that, I'll let you know at the end of this project and it will be available if you want some of this fabric. And then I was thinking about trims. So I looked at trims while I was at Joann's and pretty much all of them sucked. There was one that I thought might work for a gold trim that would kind of act as like the ribbon divider, like my inspirations. And so I decided to get that trim, but they only had eight yards of it. And I estimated very roughly that I needed about 10. And then I got home and realized it's just not really the right color, I don't think. And I was already kind of iffy on the texture because it's a braided trim as opposed to like a flat trim and ideally what I would like is like a flat ribbon like a velvet ribbon frankly a textured flat ribbon because I love velvet ribbon so I just went and I ordered four different types of velvet ribbon on Amazon we'll see what arrives and I will send the other three back but I want something that's half inch wide Naturally, none of it comes in half inch, so it's going to be either three eighths inches wide or five eighths inches wide. Hopefully, I don't decide that I need both. And I am going to use that for trims down the front, around the waist, and around the top of the ruffle on the skirt. I'm thinking about if I also want to do possibly a lace edging around the neckline and around the hem, but I haven't decided on that yet. I did look at lace while I was at Joann's, but the problem with this fabric is that it is a very brown black and all of the laces at Joann's are black black. So I might not be able to find one that works. A gold one would be really cool, but they didn't have that either, of course. And then uh, the other development in all of this is that I have changed my pattern for the bodice. I know it's like I hadn't made any decisions at all earlier because you know I hadn't. So the pattern that I am going to be starting with for the bodice now is actually this old ugly thing. Simplicity 3723 and that is because this has a really kind of nice princess seamed but like flat panel in the center bodice and that's kind of what I'm going for for the brown bodice that I like so much. And I think that it will get me relatively close to that shape. This has a zipper up the back because of course it does. And I think that it's going to actually be a pretty good jumping off point, oddly enough. So I'm going to mock this up. The fabric that I just got from Joann's is in the dryer right now. And I'm going to see how quickly this will all go together, which is to say not quickly because the velvet ribbon is getting here on Friday. So I want to show you how I'm changing the patterns here for the mock-up. So this is the center front piece here. It just seemed really, really narrow. So I have actually added, I think this was a full inch uh, to the sides here, and that's an inch on either side. And then I've also extended the top so that it becomes a sweetheart neckline up here. And I did also size up the top, I think, in the center. Yeah, right there. And this is the piece with the most significant amount of changes. For the back, this part right here, this pattern on top, this is the dirndl back or that Gertie pattern. This one is that simplicity 18th century pattern, <laughs> 18th century pattern. And I really like the higher neckline of that dirndl pattern. So I am combining the two. I've pinned them so that this one has a seam allowance. This one's on the center fold. So I've pinned them so that they match with the waist markings matching. And the shoulder is a really interesting slope difference, but we'll get there when we actually fit it. I might need to take this down. But for now though, I'm just going with the exact outline of the size 22 of the simplicity pattern, not sizing up to a 24, which I think is really where my size would be. I'm not lengthening this at all because the backs I usually find I might need to even shorten. The only difference that I'm doing here is that I'm increasing the neckline height up to this Butterick pattern. And otherwise it's going to be the same as this is. 
For the front, surprisingly enough, all I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the length up here by 0.5 inches because I always find that I need a little bit extra in that shoulder length. Everything else honestly looks really good when I hold it up. I could be totally wrong about that, but because I have added the extra inch here, that should take me to what I need to get to the size 24, which would be a two inch difference. So I'm hoping that I don't need to actually manipulate this piece here other than that length. The other thing that will happen here, but I don't want to do it yet because there's just not enough markings on this pattern piece, is that I did actually, in fact I didn't show you this, but I cut off the point of this pattern because mine will meet a waistband that has a point on it and so I want mine to be exactly at the waist. But there's no waist marking on this pattern and the only marking of like matching these two as far as I can tell are the large dots up here and doing that on a curve I'm just gonna see what on here goes past right here and just cut that off once I put it together. So I'm going to continue cutting out my mock-up, this piece and this piece, and I will show you what it looks like when it's together. So I have yet to actually sew together the mock-up. Everything is cut out, but I haven't sewn it together yet. But what I did do so far today was I have cut out all of my skirt panels. So there are five of these panels. There are 20 inches across at the top, 25 inches long, and 40 inches across the full width of the fabric. At the bottom, I have cut five of them and I cut four of my pocket pieces. The pockets all have the pattern running upside down, but you know, best use of fabric. And also they're pockets, so don't look inside my pockets, that's weird. And I also cut out, or ripped out, I guess I should say, one ruffle layer, and I'm going to test this to see, do I want a two to one ruffle ratio, which would be two ruffles to every one bottom skirt basically <laughs> and so I'm going to test this run some gathering stitches see if I like that ratio but of course as soon as I sat down to start surging around these skirt pieces I realized I was just about to run out of serger thread black serger thread so I just within the first skirt piece finished the cone of serger thread. I don't have any more. So guess what? I'm going to Joann's again. So I better remember to get that zipper this time. I'm going to get the zipper. I'm going to get the probably two spools of the serger thread, honestly, because the others are looking a little iffy low. And I also need new needles for the machine and needles by hand. And I guess I'll see if they have a better trim for this than the other one. I've also got to return the trim that I got yesterday because I didn't like that one. And yeah, we'll see. Hopefully I remember everything tonight. I will be back shortly. I am just back from my trip to Joann's and I have things. So I got the zipper, good. I got potential gold trim. I still have gold velvet trim coming from Amazon, but this was what I was looking for originally at the other Joann's yesterday, but they had this in a totally wrong shade of gold. So I was glad that they had this at my more local Joann's and I got eight, almost eight and a half yards of it. It was everything they had. And then I also got this lace, which I really liked how sort of stained glass-ish it looks and I thought that'd be really cute for around the hem so and around the neckline so I have 11 yards of this we'll see if I actually use it or not and got my serger thread and was that everything oh I also got my needles my hand sewing and my machine needles so geez also machine needles have gone up in price yikes but I'm very glad that I have these. I was down to two hand sewing needles left, so that was very important. And actually, I think it was down to two Microtex needles left as well. So hopefully I don't need to go back to Joann's for a while. And now I am going to get back to surging. So while I was sitting there surging, this happened. Who's gonna let the cat out of the bag? Apparently, bags are cool. This is a cat who does not like boxes. So I'm not really sure what's going on right now, but Dora likes the paper Joanne's bag. Hey, Dora. And Lion likes a squeaky toy. She is literally purring inside her new Joanne's bag. Dora, you having fun? A little bit? Okay, we're gonna go back to surging now. Are you gonna help me surge? Oh, cute kitten. 
So honestly, I feel like I could go for a more gathered ruffle than this. This is my tester ruffle piece right here, and this is where it would go to half of one panel. I probably could gather it more, but that would be even more fabric, and I don't want to do that to myself. So we are going to go ahead and do the two to one ratio, where there are two ruffle panels to every one panel of the skirt, body of the skirt. And speaking of body of the skirt panels, I have put them all together. So I have pockets in here somewhere. Nope, that's not a pocket seam. I wound up putting the pockets a little bit farther to the back than I would want, just because we've got, I still can't find this pocket. There it is. There's the pocket. Uh, I put them a little farther to the back than I would want just because I otherwise would wind up having them super, super close to the front, about like eight inches or really four inches from the center front, eight inches round because that's that first panel. Each of these is going to get gathered to about eight inches, each of the tops of these panels from down from 20 inches. And so if I put them here, which is to say on the back panels, the back and side seam panels, then they would be about... 24 inches around the front, so 12 inches from the front instead of like 10 inches would be the side seam. So they'll be a little bit farther back, but I think they'll be okay. And on that note, that is where I am stopping for the night. So again, I've got all five of my skirt panels assembled. I did not do the back seam because I'm going to wait for the zipper and do all of that all at once. But the rest of these are all assembled. Again, there are five of them. They are gathered around the top and the pockets, just to show you, are right here where I'm holding. So yeah, I think that I just stepped on Lion's squeaky toy. So yeah, I think that this will be good. I know I'm kind of off frame for here, but I think that will be good. And then have the ruffle around the bottom will be super cute. So tomorrow I am going to continue with the ruffle and everything and cut out or rip another nine of these panels. And I will probably sew them all together. Well, I'll serge them, sew them all together, and then hem them all in one strip and then run the gathering stitches on the other nine panels all in one go probably and then attach them to this but for now I'm going to put this on the dress form and see if those bias seams want to hang out any because I will need to know if they're hanging out before I attach the ruffle I'm pretty sure so hopefully they'll get all of that out of their system overnight and I can attach the ruffle tomorrow but for now good night so I spent most of today putting the skirt together which you probably see in the background uh, the ruffle, of course, took way longer than I had anticipated because sewing, that's how it works. I feel like that's the catchphrase or something. Uh, but I have now also put the mock-up together and I am trying it on. Now, of course, since this is not a jumper dress, I should not be trying this on on top of not only a blouse but another jumper dress. But it's finally gotten cold, so here we are. So something is not quite right, but I'm having a hard time figuring out what it is. I mean, there's a few things that are very obviously not quite right or not at all right. But for the most part, it actually like the fit is there. Like it's pinned out. I mean, I didn't, I only pinned it at the bottom at the neckline, but both of them are pinned out with a half inch seam allowance. So it's like perfect. But there's just something about the front that is not flattering. Now, one of the issues is that I wound up not having these be the same size. And this is also super, super way too wide. I've kind of folded up the side to be a little bit more accurate. And it's like, I think there's at least an inch that I folded out here. So that needs to get way, way decreased. But I'm also wondering, I had lined it up with the edge of the shoulder here. But I'm wondering if I should have done the inner edge instead. And maybe that would have brought it in a little bit. Because I think I like what the back neckline is doing. It's like part of me is like, oh, no, it's way too high. But the other part of me is like, well, if I'm wearing a dicky with it, then it needs to be high and it should, in fact, be higher. So I'm a little bit torn on that. I honestly am tempted to add a little bit more up top there, maybe like an extra half inch so that it at least looks like it's on purpose, maybe even an inch so that it looks like it's on purpose as opposed to like, oh, well, she didn't quite make it to her neckline. I feel like that's what's happening. But I think the other bit is that I feel like I want the waist in here of the center part to be a little bit narrower, maybe to like here. And then I think we're fine on the bust. 
This will probably have to just get pulled out a little bit to help with the gaping above the bust, but that is fine. But then it's that I wonder, I mean, in my original inspiration, which I'll put a close up up right here, it very much is this neckline shape and it just has some lace that fills in. But I wonder if I want to round this off a little bit more. I feel like that might just be a little bit more flattering, a little bit less harsh. So there are definitely some pretty big tweaks I need to make. I think the first thing I'm going to try though is I'm going to undo these seams right here and put them with the inner part of the shoulder and then I'm also going to at the same time cut off the excess of the shoulder hair so that we're at least looking at overall where it needs to be. The other big issue that is a very obvious issue is that it actually wound up for the most part too short. I mean we already know that these didn't match up but this center part is not hitting my natural waist. My natural waist is right here. Hopefully that's in frame. <laughs> it's right here so it's about at least an inch, inch and a quarter too short once you take in the seam allowance into account. Uh, the back is of course, mm, well, it might be perfect considering the seam allowance. So it's either perfect or it's a little too long. Sides are about, I think, quarter inch too long and then I lose the length as it comes this way with the exception of these funky little tabs that are too long so I have to really do a lot with the length here but anyway I am going to make some changes and come back and see what all that affects on here. I think I have things sorted out somehow actually changing it so that it would be connected here as opposed to connected here actually wound up making the neckline more flattering. I don't know how that happened. I did also cut off a fair amount, I think about an inch, maybe even more at the very top of the arm's eye. So this pink line is where the seam is gonna be and then the excess is seam allowance. And then I also took out a half inch on either side of the center panel above the bust right up here. So tapering it out from the bust to here. Might need to go a little bit more honestly, like maybe another, eighth or quarter of an inch on each side but right now I'm pretty happy with that and yeah somehow doing that has made everything more flattering so I don't actually think that I need to taper in the center down here obviously I need to lengthen it and actually by lengthening it it will get narrower as it gets longer as well so I need to lengthen it I made a mark on here yeah honestly this tip is where the seam allowance needs to be down here. So the pink lines that I've marked on here are where my natural waist is. So then that just needs a seam allowance underneath that in a lot of cases or like right here where it literally just needs more. And the back is good lengthwise. So that's awesome. But I am gonna go up half an inch in the back up here because I like exactly where it's hitting, which means I need the seam allowance. So overall, I think I'm in a really good place. Honestly, I'm not going to do the rest of these changes on the mock-up. I'm just going to do them on the fabric. And this is a type of fabric where there's just no way that I'm going to be able to match the pieces. So I don't care what the pattern looks like. Hopefully I won't get like a motif, you know, right on the bust point. That's kind of my goal. But beyond that, wherever it's going to land is wherever it's going to land. And if it's mirrored, you know, amazing, but it probably won't be. So all that said, I am going to go ahead and notate how much length I need to add here and then take this all apart and go ahead and cut out the actual fabric. So a little update on everything because obviously I have been doing some work and not talking about it. By the time I got to the end of the night last night, I had cut out all of the bodice pieces, both the outer pieces and then also they're all flat lined with cotton sateen. and. I pinned them all together ready to be flatlined. This morning I flatlined them on the serger and then sewed them together and I have also mocked up a sleeve. For this sleeve I took the pattern from the Butterick pattern which is a short sleeve and I just lengthened it. I also narrowed it a little bit. It just seemed like it was going to give me too much puff. This one was I think 28 inches wide, not including seam allowances, and I decided I wanted a sleeve that was about 26 inches wide or around the arm. So I went for 26 inches around, but I did mostly follow the curve of that sleeve 
for puffing and then I made mine 31 inches long plus seam allowance. So I have sewn this piece together. This is just a piece of sheet literally and I have run gathering stitches on the top and the bottom haven't pulled them up yet so I will later at some point actually do this sleeve mock-up and try it on with the bodice but the other thing that I'm trying to figure out with the bodice is that I got my order of all of the velvet ribbons and I hated three of them or rather I really don't like the 5 8 inch wide they're just way too wide. One of them also was a really terrible ugly color. It was brown, not gold, frankly. And then the other ones, like honestly, this one in particular, I really liked the color of, but I hated the width. So I only got one of them, unfortunately, that was three eighths of an inch, which is this one. I'm not positive I love the color because I feel like it's just a little bit more orangey gold than the gold on the dress, but it's close. The big question is, which one do I prefer more? So right now I have pinned out, this is the braided trim from Joann's. I have pinned that out on the seam, just one strip, and then also making the waist belt that I haven't even gotten to yet, but making that, sort of pinning that out. And then I've done the two strips of the gold velvet ribbon over here, and I'm going to take a picture of this, and then I'm going to replace this part here at the waist with the gold velvet ribbon, see what I think about that sort of thing, and try and figure out which one I like better. Now, there's one issue with if I decide that I want to use this one, which is I don't think I have enough for everything that I want to do. I'm sure I told you how many yards I got, but I've already forgotten what that number was, but I think it was like eight. So I want to say this one was like eight yards, 15 inches, and I'm pretty sure I need a lot more than that. So that might make things difficult because this velvet ribbon really does not match this. And I don't think that I would want to use them together at all. I don't know. Things are, I have to think about things and figure out where they're going. But this is where I am currently. And frankly, I think I'm actually going to close out this week of the project right here because it is going into Friday evening right now. I have a performance tonight, two performances tomorrow, and a performance on Sunday afternoon, by which point I need to have this video edited really because next week is a shortened week because my parents are coming for next weekend's performances, the final weekend of performances. So I'm going to call it for this week and this is where we have gotten to in Gunny Sacks week one. I'm really hoping that we will finish the Gunny Sacks Ween project for week two's video, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. So in the beginning of the next video we will be trying out the sleeve mock-up. I will determine which trim we're going to be using and then I will kind of just like sew everything together and it will be mostly done other than I'm still hoping to do that corduroy bodice which will be a separate piece. But yeah, I'm really excited with how it's coming along. I mean, the skirt is done. It just needs to be attached to the bodice. The bodice is at this point, I mean, it needs to be attached to the skirt and then zipper needs to be added and it needs to have the finishings and the sleeve. And then it's just trimming. So I'm excited where this is going. Oh, I do need the little waist belt piece that's added on there as well, which I'm still not positive how I'm gonna do that. So that will be the big question mark, I guess, for next week's video. But yeah, I'm very excited with how this is coming along. I cannot wait to wear this. I feel like this is going to be something I'm going to want to wear all the time. And hopefully it's appropriate to wear this at other times of year besides just Halloween because it is all Halloween symbols. But I still really like it. And anyway... I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Angela. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!